final press conference before we kick off in earnest tomorrow. The uh, FIFA CONCACAF Bahamas 2013 and FIFA Beach, Soc Beach Soccer World Cup qualifier. Uh, as you know, we gathered here with some 11 teams competing for some two positions to qualify for the World Cup, which will be held uh, in September of this year in Tahiti. Uh, uh, I am, of course, Anton C., president, uh, host president of the Bahamas Football Association. I'm also uh, a member of the Country Capital Soccer Committee, as well as the uh, Association's Committee of uh, FIFA. I'm joined on the podium this morning by the coach of Mexico, uh, Mr. Ramon, uh, Bahamas' uh, coach, Mr. Siciliano, uh, coach of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, his name, I'm going to help one. Alexander Sorez and uh, Jamaican national coach, Mr. Andrew Price. Andrew Price. Uh, this morning uh, we're going to give you a brief uh, format of the, the competition and uh, Mr. Ponset, Joseph Ponset from Beat Soccer Worldwide, whose competition this is to organize. We are the host, but uh, it's their competition to organize. Mr. Ponset will brief you on the format of the competition, how it's going to operate. Uh, and how eventually we hope to crown two participants for the PT uh, competition in September. So, following that, we'll open the floor up to you to ask the respective coaches any questions, or myself, or Mr. Ponson, any questions regarding the competition. Uh, you would have been handed a media guide which uh, contains a lot of information uh, regarding the competition and the tournament itself, uh, the history in there as well. So, uh, you can feel free to make use of that. But uh, we're not going to keep you here too long, so uh, with that said, I will turn to uh, Joseph, who will outline the competition and how it um, um, is. Each Worldwide is the, you know, is the entity that organizes all the qualifiers to all over the world. Uh, just for your information, you're going you're gonna to see in the media guide, we already organized uh, some qualifiers for this World Cup that will be hosted in Tahiti, as, as Santon said. We already uh, organized in Europe, in Moscow. Uh, in, in Qatar, uh, in Asia, in uh, Argentina, for Comebol, and now we are organizing here in CONCACAF, and we still have to organize in, in Africa the, in two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, I would like as well to, to reinforce the idea of this sport. This sport is growing, it's growing every single year, um, and it's, it's a sport that, besides that this is a sport really competitive with a, with uh, coaches that are specialists of this modality, and also players, specialists of this modality, is also is more. We call that is more than a sport because it's a mixing of a sport, a really professional sport, and also it's an entertainment for the crowd. You know, the entrance is free, so we would like that to spread out this message to all your, to all the, through your through your uh, newspapers, you know, and the radios and TVs that the the the, the entrance is free for all the the public. Okay, and and, uh, and when I say that it's growing this sport is because you know from from 2006 you know uh, this qualifier were uh, was were played by by uh, by four teams and now we are 11 teams. This is a huge growth in this area. Uh, thanks for for the, the Spanish countries, Caribbean, uh, United States, Canada. So all these regions grow a lot, and and run right now. The last qualifier we were eight, and now we have uh, three more teams, Puerto Rico, Guyana, and Trinidad and Tobago that joined this great sport, and also more, more uh, FAs that they are developing this, this sport in their federation, and we sure that in the next, in the next qualifier will be, will be in, the, in the event as well. Um, also, let me uh, remind you that this event will be broadcast for 100 countries, will be broadcast for uh, for all Fox, all Fox, uh, all America through Fox, uh, North America, Central America, and South America. Also, Al Jazeera, Middle East, and uh, North Africa. Some television from uh, Europe. Also, through BigSoccerWorldwide.com, uh, BigSoccerWorldwide.com, and also uh, you can get information from Concacaf.com uh, as well. Um, finally, just uh, let you know that you have the media guide. The event will start tomorrow at 12 o'clock, every single day until Friday. Uh, well, Wednesday and, and Thursday we have five matches, uh, one hour, 15 hour per match. 
is uh, three groups and two groups of four and one group of three. And, uh, and then on Friday we have uh, six matches in order to that the group of three play another match uh, in second and third in order to balance uh, in comparison to the, to, to the other groups. Saturday we have the semi-finals and the playoff and uh, on, on Sunday we have the final and also the playoff of the third and fourth and uh, fifth, sixth and seventh and eighth. Um, this event, uh, the best, the tops, the top uh, two of this event will go to Tahiti to play against the other the other teams that come from the other confederations. Okay, I think that all is clear. And well, just to spread out this message, thank you very much for the press, for TV, and I will appreciate if you're going to spread out this message that you know the people have to come. You know, it's going to be a great event. You know, it's a mixing of a sport and, and entertainment. And, and well, thank you again, Anton. And uh, and. Working trying to get this uh, brand expanded. Very pleased to see that Trinidad has joined us for the very first time. And uh, this gentleman here who is representing Trinidad as their coach is a world champion, former world champion. Uh, four times. He was a former coach of Brazil. Uh, so he's he's now joined Trinidad and is building the program in Trinidad along with uh, Benny there, who has been a staple of the American side for a long time. I think it's the first competition he hasn't played in since uh, CompuCare started uh, the Inside Competition. So that said, uh, like I said, uh, there are three clear questions. Three questions. And just identify it. Brent Stubbs from the Trivia. <coughs> City, can you tell us about the facilities? How early is it for competition? Um, well, the players and the team have been training for the last few days and we haven't gotten any major complaints or any complaints really. So I think uh, the, the facility will be, uh, is ready for competition. Uh, we have some last minute uh, stuff to do in terms of just preparing it aesthetically. Uh, but as far as the competition services is concerned, I think it will play well and we will have a real good competition uh, over the next few days. And, uh, but we'll be How, how, how are we ready? Uh, we've been we trained for like uh, last three months. We've been playing and training very hard. And uh, we spent a lot of time for this competition because it's very important to Bahamas and everybody and soccer. And uh, we just came back from Mexico. We did a few, you know, a few games over there against Brazil, Spain in Mexico uh, just to, to get ready for this uh, high level competition and uh, these boys back home always focus and uh, just get you know prepare for the last like I said the last three months and uh, dedicate some time to, to put this team together. Any concerns going into, into the tournament? Yeah we have uh, we have a few surprises, and uh, you know the team is uh, you know quite good right now. They have uh, young players, and uh, we go try the best we can to qualify. And uh, you guys will see, you know, the show when uh, we have time. Hi, Vanessa Mont from BahamasLocal.com. Um, actually, as he mentioned, for our Spanish-speaking audience, I'll ask in Spanish and in English for the coach of Mexico. ¿De qué importa es este deportivo por los países de Latin America y es indirect competición con fútbol tradicional? I want to know if what is the importance of this sport for the countries of Latin America and if it is in direct competition with the traditional football and how that relationship is. Well, fortunately, I think we've been growing. I think specifically for the countries in Central America that maybe because some other bigger countries have uh, more structure in regular mm -hmm. soccer, this is a sport where you can like, achieve like good things, yeah. good things for the people like Salvador did. And they were for the last World Cup and for their country was a big success and it helped to develop younger players, mm -hmm. people wanting to be here.
So that's like a very good example of what you can do if you uh, get involved in beach soccer in the region. We have a lot of beaches, a lot of yeah. sand, especially in the Caribbean. I mean, it's like the perfect spot yeah. for the place, I think. And uh, for Latin America, of course, we've been growing a lot. I mean, El Salvador being fourth place, the States being in second round, or so Canada being second round, Mexico has been second place in the World Cup. That's not often in, uh, in regular soccer. No, that, yeah. In this sport, we have like more uh, potential to be in the first places in the world. So we have to take advantage of that. And, and uh, I think it's happened well. We know we have our responsibility because we are the current champions. And uh, we have created expectations in our country of Mexico being in the World Cup again. So for us, it's really important. We know how hard it is. We have some of the, and believe me, some of the best coaches in the world here with Roberto and Alexandre. And uh, that's going to make the tournament tough. You know, they've been working. The people is now with our experience in other teams. We have a Costa Rica that has a league in the country. We have Guatemala that has, has been growing because they have a league also. And uh, for us, it's not going to be easy. For sure, we know that Mexico traditionally, because some people uh, mix it with uh, regular soccer, Mexico has this spot in CONCACAF where it's the team to beat. We know that, we take that responsibility, and we are here just to, to win the championship if it's possible, and if not, to qualify for the World Cup. Let's see. How do you look at the facilities? The facility is great. I mean, now we have in Mexico something like this, but I can tell you that in most parts of the world, they will envy this because it was a big effort from Anton, from Fred, to have this made. If you don't give the right value, I think it's not their problem, it's the rest of the people's problem. But it's in a lot of uh, very important places for it's soccer. They don't have this. They don't have this. So this is like a very good step to develop this great sport. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, we also come here to support our Caribbean colleagues, especially the Hamas, who have the first beach soccer facility in the in the Caribbean. And you know, we are here to carry the flag high for the Caribbean, along with all our other Caribbean competitors. Um, El Salvador is a very good team. Um, the last World Cup qualifying that we played, and we were leading 4 0 and ended up losing 10 8. So, you know, we pretty much know what they are capable of doing, and we're prepared. Um, we're here to compete and compete hard, and hopefully, if we do well, then we might very well qualify. But we're not going to just come here and laze around, we're going to be very competitive. And we respect all the teams here, and especially with all the coaches. We have some seasoned coaches here who are very well experienced. So I expect a very good competitive um, series. Um, one thing about beach soccer, it's a very equalizing factor because you play on sand. And once you're aware of the technical aspects of the game, teams can be very competitive that are not very competitive on the world stage um, on grass football. So it's going to be a very exciting tournament and I encourage Bahamians, Jamaicans, Trinidadians and people all over in the Bahamas to come out and support the game because it's going to be really exciting for the next um, couple of days to see some good beats from the ball. Alexandre? Alexandre uh, said that, that El Salvador is, is the two best teams in this qualifier. He said that he believes that he's the two best, the best teams of this qualifier. He said that uh, he participated three times uh, for the World Cup, so shows three, four, four times, four times. Four times. Three. Four times. Three times. Marseille, Dubai. Dubai. My fault. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> so three times. And also the most important thing is that uh, he believes that the Salvador have a, a, a players, a specialist in 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 beach soccer. That it is really important for to develop and to grow, the to increase, you know, to develop the, the to improve the the, the performance of of each national team. To have a, a team, a player specialist, and not that it's coming from football, is really important, and El Salvador 
have this type of six weeks, the last six weeks, but they have a really strong team, young, uh, quick team as well. And you know, and thanks for the ex USA player Benny that is helping him. I can say that they, they are doing a really good job in terms of to build a, a project. And he's back, and he wish to have a, a good matches against against Mexico, Canada, and also Guyana. That is a is a strong stuff. These players always, you know, in the beach soccer, they don't grow up in the in the regular soccer. Then when they retire, they coming back for you know, play beach soccer. They always young, they've been playing very hard, and they have a real good program. Always use uh, young players to be uh, a beach soccer player, and they can they can show you guys for the last three, you know, events. They've been showing a very good, you know, team, and this, uh, uh, the trainer, you know, the coach, they always looking for better positions and better system to play, uh, try to always put something together for these young boys. Of course, that's, that's easy, you know, to teach a young boys to play beach soccer because they they not playing like a, a different sport. They always in a beach soccer. They don't try to play grass, then they come in for beach soccer. Then they put everything together and uh, that's these beautiful you know, work that they've been doing for a long time. And uh, also, like uh, Mexico, like uh, Ramon Haya, he's been doing the same thing, like put everything together and try always increase the level. And, uh, you know, Mexico, El Salvador, that's the, the, you know, the best player, uh, you know, the best teams really in the Caribbean. And also, this, uh, I think for myself, I think that's a, gr a, a great surprise for us right now in the Caribbean, that's Trinidad. They have real good players, and uh, cannot ask no questions about the you know Alexandre and many. That's real good, you know, uh, our coach. So, so. As I uh, said before, I think Salvador will be taking us a great example of what you can achieve. So they have very young players. I think most is told already. They have uh, very young players that were born in beach soccer that have been growing up in beach soccer, and the results are there now. I know they are getting more support because of the results. That's like the way to work in beach soccer. You cannot ask before you get results. After you get results, you're going to get the support. That's how it is. It's sad, but that we have to work with that. We have to accept it. And that's uh, like the biggest example. Salvador now is uh, the team with more support in the region, uh, with some of the best players in the region. They have Frank that won uh, personal trophies in the World Cup. So also with that comes our responsibility. It's now time for the players and the coach, Rudy, that is a very good coach, to show that they are prepared for this. Coaches and trainers in Big Soccer, I think, yeah, um, are three of the top five in the world uh, here with us uh, for the next few days. And um, I just encourage our uh, uh, viewing audience and viewing public to come out and, and support this event. Uh, it's going to be a great event. They said we're going to have some excellent matches here over the course of the next few days, and uh, which will culminate in Sunday. Sunday is really going to be a, a massive day. They said you have 11 teams seeking to qualify for two positions, and uh, each one uh, you know, came here to do just that. So it's going to be an exciting event, and I would encourage you all to come out. I just want to again thank our sponsors, uh, BTC, uh, Scotia Bank. Uh, Atlantis, of course, and uh, hopefully uh, these teams will enjoy Atlantis a little too much so that they uh, give us some harm with our Bahamian team. Uh, <laughs> we can slip in there and do some damage. But yeah, I just want to see Ted Abbey's here, who is uh, our contact there at Atlantis, who has uh, made all of this possible. As I said, acknowledge Mr. Johnson, uh, BahamasLocal.com, and all of our sponsors. Just want to thank you very much for supporting us in this event. And, uh, Come out and watch uh, the matches. It's going to be a great, great time. As we say in, uh, in, in beach football, it's not just a sport, it's a spectacle. You want to see it.
Thank you. We're going to make now the official picture for those.